So here is a major theme about idealism and reality. Idealism and reality. And let me just um, show you in a little bit what I mean. So let me see. Okay, so let me just talk about this first. You know, a lot of the times when someone makes you mad, right? Someone makes you really, really upset. You blow over. Like, you, you just blow up at them. And be, you blow up very often. And then you kind of forget about it. So you don't hold grudges. You don't have that type of... Um, it, I, I want to say, like, memory of past transgressions. You don't have a, a list of all the times that they have, you know upset you all the times they have lied all the times that they have cheated all the times that they have slighted you or hurt you or undermine you because you don't keep all of those things in you know so when you're upset you blow up and then you get over it and because you get over it i feel like the other person kind of takes advantage of the fact that you don't commit these things to memory and then they repeat the same mistakes and what that does eventually is that Without the memory, without the lessons, without, you know, the knowledge of, okay, this has happened before and it's happening again. Without the, the I, I want to say, slowing down and examining what exactly happened before and why is, it happen again, why is it happening again. We have to understand cycles in order not to repeat cycles. We have to really understand cycles so then we can break these cycles. And I feel like that's what's happening here. Both of these cards are major, major karmic cards. Major, major. So we have here the Five of Pentacles. And I usually look at this in private reading as like a karmic relationship. It can be reversed or, you know, in the upright position. But it, it usually indicates a really difficult relationship where the two, of the, the two people have gone through some very traumatic experiences together as a couple. And in the reverse, it's like they didn't grow from it. They're both so stubborn that they didn't grow from it. In the upright position, they're growing from it. And the karma is no longer there because they have grown. They have kind of uh, learned the lesson that they were supposed to learn in the process of coming together and working through their relationship issues. But in the reverse position, it indicates to me retrenchment, not learning, refusing to learn, refusing to accommodate, and refusing to put yourself in your partner's shoes and seeing what they're seeing, okay? So I feel like, you know, you guys can be very, very stubborn in which you kind of gloss over relationship problems and you might not be able to see patterns you might not be able to see and air signs are really good at this aquarius and uh, uh gemini's they see patterns all the time and they they like to be able to look at a situation and they find thrill and excitement in being able to decipher patterns but in terms of like the way that you do deal with things it's more like let's start this let's start that let's start all of these things but not being able to really dig deep and figuring out what are some of these patterns. We, it's, it's like a lot of the times with couples, they fight over the, the same thing. So one day they could fight about, you know, the oven. The next day they could fight about like the, the washer. And then next week is like about the dryer. But at the deep foundational level, it's not really about the oven, the washer, or the dryer. It's about something else. It's about somebody not doing the work to maintain these appliances. It's about somebody, you know, being lazy. Or it's, it's always like a cover for something else. So I feel like when you and your partner argue, you think it's about this, it's about that, it's about something else. But it's all pointing to the same problem. And you're not really addressing these problems. You're kind of glossing them over, okay? So where I'm going with this, with this Five of Pentacles, this is like not learning, not progressing. With the Six of Pentacles as well, this is a card greatly about generosity, okay? But I also feel in the reverse position, it's almost like wanting to, you know, um, play savior to another person. Feeling a little bit like pity for the other person 
and wanting to make yourself like martyr to help the other person, to prop the other person up, to kind of like mend their broken wings. And then hoping that they'll thank us, hoping that they'll appreciate everything, all the sacrifices we've made for that person. And then they'll stay with us and love us forever and ever and ever. So I feel like there is this deep kind of twisted sense of dependency. And I feel like using dependency, using somebody's need as a crutch to allow them to stay or to, you know, allow them to fall in love with you. So this can operate you know, um, in both direction, somebody has been doing this to you, kind of like feeding into your sense of pity, or you are doing this to somebody else, hoping that, okay, they'll see all the sacrifices I made, financial and, um, sacrifices, resource, uh, resources, whatever it is, and they'll appreciate the gesture. But a lot of the times when we give, right, when we give and when we care and when we want to dole out resources we need to be able to come to the point where we give it freely without strings attached in a very innocent way so this is about true generosity this is about giving because we care about the other person we want the other person to be okay we don't expect anything in return and this is more about you know giving with strings attached giving with a, a hidden agenda. So I feel like you were dealing with somebody like this or you yourself were exercising these uh, unhealthy behaviors in your relationship. And because of that, the relationship did not work. And I feel like some of you, there is a sense here about dealing with somebody who's really, really intelligent, okay? Like dealing with somebody who's very intelligent and they are very intelligent, they had um, a lot of potential, but they might not have had the means to make their dreams a reality. So for example, they're supposed to go to school and you know, cause they're really smart. And you know that if they go to school or they get their degree, they're gonna be like, you know, making really good money. And so you nurture them through the education process. You nurture their dreams. You took care of them. You nurture their aspirations. You gave them the emotional support. And then once they made it, once they got on top, once they achieved success, they didn't want to stay in the relationship because they felt like they have outgrown the relationship. And it's a natural progression of things. People do outgrow each other. But I feel like some of you are holding on to resentment. You know, I did all of these things. I made all of these sacrifices. Why is the other person still not there? And I'm feeling as if I'm I'm feeling as if it, it's like the the you're you're finally holding a grudge. You know. And in the past, you've always just blown up and then you were okay. But then this is the first time where you're at a point where you're holding a grudge against somebody. And it's really hard for you to let go because the, the feelings are really confusing, right? It's like a mixture of annoyance and passion, okay? It's a mixture here of loving somebody very unconditionally, loving without strings attached, and wanting the best for the other person. But I feel like the other person might not have the same sense of um, generosity as you do. So I'm feeling here that the major theme and the major lesson for you guys for this year, because 2018 is a universal number two year, it's a very other related, uh, other related year so it's it's other oriented you can't get ahead without you know assistance from other people and it's it's not easy for you to deal with this because you're so independent you don't need other people and you've never had to rely on other people you structure and design your life in a way where you can come and go as you please without having to cater to another person unless you love them and then you don't mind right so I feel like because the year is coming in, it's going to force you to confront some of these deep rooted patterns that you have when it comes to relationships. Okay. Um, where you might have, you might have, I, I want to say like, this is your energy here 
with the page of wands in the reverse okay this is like excitedly looking at a situation almost like um giving somebody you know care like it, it this is like putting somebody on a pedestal you know really uh starry-eyed and smitten by another person and putting them on a pedestal thinking that they're god thinking that they can do no wrong thinking that they're the best thing in the world in the meantime the characters that you imbue to them it's a very uh, it's not like a, an accurate assessment because you know first of all we all make mistakes we are all in uh, fallible we are all fallible and so the person that you think is the greatest thing on earth they're human too and so coming in for this year you're a little bit jaded so you're like this you're just like I'm gonna take care of myself because I can't really rely on other people to take care of me no one is really you know uh, high so high up on the totem pole that I can put them on a pedestal again somebody that you really looked up to has really you know fallen off their pedestal and now you don't really know what to believe anymore that's what it feels like to me and so now you're at a point where I'm going to be really really self-sufficient I'm going to learn to take care of myself and not have to rely on another person at all and emotionally you still yearn for that connection that relationship that makes you feel safe and secure and make you feel that you know infatuation or puppy love again but you're a lot less starry-eyed you're a lot less naive and you're at a point here where I need to take care of myself first before I even take care of the other person so I feel like you're holding back your energy you're pulling it back and you do just enough to help them but you're gonna take a little bit more of a receptive role and wait for them to come to you if they need assistance if they need help if they want to be with you even and so we have options that are on the table for you in terms of relationship. We also have a blast from the past and it's surrounded by a cluster of cards that are really negative, okay? So don't go back to your past. You need to allow your world to open up. You need to allow it to open up so that you can start dating again. And January might not be the right time. So I feel like your dolled up ready to go you know looking really attractive really really pretty waiting for Mr. or Mrs. Wright to come into the picture for you and the timing is going to happen for you but it just feels to me like January there are some karmic issues that we need to think about we don't need to engage in it or engage with that person but we need to forgive ourselves more than anything and then we need to relinquish that person, that situation. And I feel like doing that is going to free you up energetically for new things to come into the picture. Okay. Um, one last thing, Aries. I'm seeing a lot of people on social media. Okay. A lot of people on social media. It's, it's almost like, um, what was that expression? They say like, it's, you're the curator of your own life, right? On social media. And what that does is that you can post whatever you want. You can post pictures of yourself in the most flattering light because you're creating that narrative. And so I feel a lot of pictures taken and I feel like you're creating this, um, this photo album of you having the time of your life. But I feel like deep down there is a deep longing. It's like a, a, a deep feeling wanting to belong, wanting to find the one already so that you're not constantly, you know, getting dressed up, going to these places where there's loud music, where there's alcohol, where there's, um, it's like you're physically tired, but you have to keep up with it because you feel like that's the only way for me to meet my, you know, significant other or to meet Mr. or Mrs. Wright. There are other ways to do it, okay? And with this energy, this is somebody who's very loving, very caring, and, and they want to take care of other people. They want to feed, nurture, and soothe other people. If there is a way for you to give back, like in terms of community service, I feel like that might be a better way for you to meet people because I feel like some of you are physically very tired of having to go through the charade, you know, going to the bar, going to the club, meeting people in a very conventional manner, 
having to drive home after a few drinks and, and, you know, feeling scared and nervous about getting pulled over. And it's like, it's a charade. It's something that you feel is the only way where you can meet new people. And that's not reality. Okay. So aim for thinking a little bit more outside the box and figuring out where your interests actually lie, what you're really good at. So if you love to cook, you know, volunteer at a homeless shelter or volunteer at a soup kitchen where you can serve food, where you can be in your element. If you like to host parties, then host like a singles party so that people can bring single friends by and then the odds of you hooking up with somebody is a lot higher, okay? If you like to take care of people in any capacity, volunteer your time, be an event coordinator so that you're in charge of the logistics and you get to know everybody's name and then people come to you when they have problems. So I feel like there are other ways and the traditional conventional way is making you physically tired. Like your body is, is not, you're not feeling it anymore. Okay. So really be honest with yourself about what's not working and leave that life behind is what I'm feeling. Okay. Uh, Aries, I am done lecturing, so I hope the reading has been helpful. Um, singles, I feel like it's a good month to date, but I feel like you need to find different ways to meet people, okay? Try online dating, try online dating. It doesn't have to be so complicated, okay? And then for others, I feel like you have recently gotten out of a relationship and you're, you're, you're not ready just yet emotionally. And then for others of you, uh, there's a lot of travel and movement and it might interfere with your dating life, even though, you know, you know that you, a lot of people are like, you're getting a lot of attention, but it seems like events around you are accelerated. So you don't really have time to do anything else. Okay. So prioritize your love life for this year, because I feel like some of you, you're best with a relationship partner. But don't make a relationship partner like a project for you to work on, to nurse their broken wings and to, you know, make sure that you feed them and let them grow. And then when they grow up, they don't appreciate the contribution. Okay, so don't let that repeat again. Okay.